Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are going to check out another of these 1/18th scale figures. We actually had already reviewed one earlier today. I figured why not put another one up now because I had a little extra time, so why not grab another review? And this time we have another again of the newest round of Beasts of the Mesozoic figures, as these are actually shipping now, so you can place your order and get your order in really quickly to start to acquire these, you know, pretty much immediately. But this time we have the Satakosaurus mongoliensis, and this is one that's really cool as well because it's one of three of the newest round of herbivores, and then we have three of the raptor series, and this is again another of the Ceratopsian series figures, and it's definitely a really cool choice to create another of these Satakosaurus. I really loved the larger 1 6th scale version, so I'm going to absolutely adore this version. I'm certain of that. You can see as far as the packaging goes, it's your standard when it comes to this style figure with that really awesome collector-friendly packaging. You can see that we have a little look there at the uh, you know Satakosaurus figure itself. You can also see the alternate legs. Of course, the species title right there and some fantastic artwork of the Satakosaurus right there, as well as the Beasts of the Mesozoic logo. And then here on the back, you can again see that little area you can cut out if you choose to, to have yourself that really cool Satakosaurus, kind of like a card. However, I prefer to keep the packaging original because you could just slip the figure right back in, slip the plastic over, and it's almost like you never touched it in the first place. But you can again see that we have a checklist here on the back of all of the other figures that are in this line, this wave of 118th scale releases, and we've only got one left, and then we will have completed all of them as far as reviews go. So let's go ahead, pop this out of the box, and check it out. So as we begin to dive in here, straight away, it's upside down, but we have the Beast of the Mesozoic stand, that little kind of base that comes with the figure. We've also got ourselves the alternate legs, so you can pose your Satakosaurus differently. And then we have the figure itself, and that is absolutely beautiful looking, honestly. Like, as per usual, I'm really impressed every single time I get one of these figures, but look at how nice and small that head sculpt is. That head sculpt fits right there within my finger, and the detailing and paintwork is honestly so incredibly precise and beautiful. I really, really feel like it's incredibly impressive, and uh, overall the figure looks very nice from every vantage point. I actually really like the color scheme of this one. I was definitely a big fan of it on the original larger version, but it also looks really good on this one. I'm also wondering how good the ability to stand will be, so let's go ahead and just give that a shot. It actually looks like it should be all right here. Actually, if I could get the legs positioned in the correct fashion... So there you go, it's standing, and it's standing beautifully, just like all of the others have done so far. And you can see it's standing in the bipedal position, but of course you could take your Satakosaurus and put the arms out so that it can kind of stand in the quadrupedal position. Again, it's really up to you how you choose to display your dinosaur, but definitely stands very nicely and overall looks quite beautiful. So let's go ahead and jump straight to a closer look at this right now. So starting up here at the head sculpt of our very small Satakosaurus, you can see that the skin texture looks really nice. We've got some beautiful looking scale detail really quite popping there on the sculpt of the Satakosaurus. You can also see the nostrils sculpted out right there. Very, very tiny nostrils, but they are there. The beak looks really good as well, and I like the fact that they've used some tones of color like, well, we're losing focus here, but not just one tone of color. You can see like we have a nice light kind of a yellowish tone, but then there's kind of like a reddish almost like a dark reddish dry brushing slightly over it. Like it really highlights the detail quite beautifully, just adds a little depth to the paint job, but also just generally looks really cool. You can see the eyes are painted with a yellow, given a black pupil, very small eyes, yet perfectly painted. You can see no sloppiness at all. As we lead back here, you can see, first of all, I actually have a really dark tone of color for the large majority of the face, but you have this lighter tone of color that kind of creeps down there, uh, runs under the eye socket area, but then leads back toward the neck, and you can see that there's also some reddish tones that have been dry brushed over that as well. So again, adding just a little extra color variation to the figure. You can see the top of the head sports that really nice, kind of a dark red, and then we have like a dark black dry brushing over top. 
so that as well highlights the detail quite nicely. Of course, we've got ourselves an articulated jaw, and you can see we have a nice purplish tone there on the inside of the mouth, sporting a gorgeous gloss coat. Honestly, that gloss coat is shining in probably one of the most realistic ways possible. Like, it really, really looks very saliva-like on the inside of the mouth. But all of the paintwork in there looks very nice, and again, that gloss coat absolutely shines on the inside of the mouth. And yet again, that articulated jaw works perfectly on this Satakosaurus. As you lead back here into the neck region, you can see some more really nice skin wrinkles, skin folds, and stuff as you start to get back here a little further into the neck. You can also see that reddish tone picks up here on the side of the neck, but we have that kind of black tone there, striped down and designed through the course of the neck, all the way down toward the shoulder area, and then it kind of expands. It starts to branch out a little bit and looks pretty nice. Again, we have that kind of darker dry brushing over the entire figure, especially in the reddish areas. Of course, you don't have that in the lighter tones, but as far as like that dark red, you have like a blackish dry brushing that, again, really highlights the detail, but also sort of adds just a little element of color difference to the figure, I think, in a realistic way. Leading down into the arm, you can kind of pick up on some muscle definition as well as some more really nice scale detail. And then down into the hand, you've got some very nicely painted nails. Again, super tiny fingers, but they look great as far as the sculpting goes, but also as far as the paint goes. You can see we have that nice yellowish tone there for the underside of the figure that does run here out onto the underside of the arms. And then leading back up into the stomach region, again, more beautiful looking skin texture throughout. You can see a little bit of kind of like a bulge here in the stomach, so it looks nice and healthy, well fed. It doesn't look like it's malnourished by any means. And again, the skin texture, if we're losing focus yet again, the skin texture looks really good here through the entire figure. You can see more, again, transitioning back and forth between the reddish tones and then back to the blacks and stuff. Quite a bit of transitioning back and forth between those colors, but it looks really nice. As you lead back here into the thigh region, you can again see the muscle definition of our Satakosaurus. You can also see the yellowish tone lead up here through the lower part of the thigh and then down into the calf. You can see the front of the leg and kind of like the squatting position for our Satakosaurus. It almost looks like it's you know, squatting down maybe to take a drink, maybe to take a bite to eat. It really is not clear exactly what our Satakosaurus is doing, but it definitely has a little bit of like a squat to the positioning of the legs. And the foot sculpt also looks really nice. Kind of get this out here a little bit to take a better look at it. You can see the toes look great. Again, really nicely painted nails. And just like with the nails in the hands, we have a gloss coat so that they shine quite realistically, again, in both places. And then leading up here into the tail of our Satakosaurus, you can continue to see, again, that beautiful looking skin texture. But you can also see that we have the black that kind of stripes down along the top. We've got the red here in the center, and then we have the yellow here on the underside. The yellow does cut off so far down, as does the red right after that. And then the entire tip of the tail is a black, but it looks really nice. And you can also see that we have those beautiful quills here on the back of the tail of our Satakosaurus. And they are painted with kind of like a dark red with a little bit of the yellow creeping through. But then as you lead out here toward the tips, it's definitely like a really dark tone, like a blackish tone it looks like out there. And it all looks really cool. The actual detailing in general looks great in that area. Of course, you're not really going to see too much difference or anything over here. It's all the same as far as this type of a figure goes because it's a fully posable, fully articulated figure. So you're not really going to see too much difference on one side any more so than the other side. But it is always nice to take a look over over here at the other side just to make sure that the sculpt detail paint everything looks just as nice and consistent as it did on the initial side and you can also see the underside again sports that light tone that yellowish tone with some more gorgeous texturing gorgeous detail nice skin wrinkles everything that you would expect to be there is absolutely there on this satakosaurus as far as the articulation goes again we have the articulation of the jaw like we saw earlier we also have the articulation right here behind the head but it's definitely a little stiff there we go you can see it's swiveling a little bit so you can move it very nicely you also have articulation down here at the base of the neck so you can turn the head make our satakosaurus look pretty much wherever it wants to or wherever you want it to you can look down and all that as you lead back you've got the articulation in the arms you've also got articulation here in the midsection so you can turn the body of the satakosaurus very nicely i think it also yes absolutely goes up and then down as well allowing lots of posability for your figure it's a little stiff again but we've got the hip articulation as well as the knee articulation 
Again, a lot of the joints are stiff straight out of the package. It's you know not until you wear them in or maybe heat them up a little bit to soften the joints just so you can move them a little bit. Sometimes they're a little stiff. And since I always review these straight out of the package, most times they end up being a little stiff. You can also move the arms, you know, like this too. I didn't state that. You can move them out away from the body and then in. And then you have the tail, which of course can go left, right, up, down, all over the place, however you would like. It can also swivel if you really want to, but maybe not the most realistic articulation as far as the swiveling goes, because I don't think that Satakosaurus could do that, but really, really nice and super smooth articulation. And then you also have, of course, the alternate legs, which again have the perfect precise paintwork like you would expect them to but you've also got those beautiful toe sculpts really nicely painted nails again very high quality no matter which route you go definitely excited to see those connected to the figure and see how it looks and then you of course on top of that have the beast of the mesozoic stand here that you would attach your satakosaurus to you can see a little peg right there that you would slide up into the hole on the bottom of the foot to stand your satakosaurus so let's go ahead exchange the legs out and check it out from there and then, of course, just like I had stated, just like with the other figures, you just pull the leg off. You've got a little peg right there. And then you take the new leg that you want to apply and you just slide it into that spot right there. And you've now got yourself, again, a more upright version of the Satakasaurus. And what's cool about this is you can kind of display your Satakasaurus in like maybe like a jumping you know, position or something like that because you have the outstretched leg and then you have this other leg that looks like it's taking a step really cool to kind of give you the options and you know different abilities to display your satakasaurus depending on your preference but we're going to go ahead and put the other legs back on just because we're going to give this a measurement and actually again to show you how you connect this to the base we're going to go ahead and do that you have a hole here on the bottom of the foot of the satakasaurus you just have to basically line that up here with the base and there you go and actually we're going to put that back down a little bit of course, like I had shown off earlier, you don't really need the base for the Satakosaurus to stand. It can stand very nicely without it, but it's probably a good idea to have it if you are going to be displaying it in different poses and stuff. The base is definitely going to come in handy. But as far as the size goes in the positioning that it's in, again, with the original legs on, it would be taller with the alternate legs on. But for a length, you are looking at about the... I'd say about four and a quarter inches or around 10 and a half, closing in on 11 centimeters. And then for a height, about an inch and a half or around, I almost knocked it over, or around four centimeters. For a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon next to our very small 1/18th scale Satakasaurus. And you can see how small it is. But again, whenever I show this size comparison, I really feel like it always shows off how impressive the figures are. Because up close, you can, you know, see how beautiful the sculpt is, how gorgeous the paint is. But you can never truly appreciate how impressive the sculpt and paint is for the size of the figure until you see how small it really is here, especially next to these guys. So definitely, in my opinion, an important comparison. And then for another size comparison, here is the Protoceratops andruzi next to the Satakosaurus mongoliensis. And you can definitely see again that they are, you know, I mean, similarly sized as far as like length and stuff. Of course, the Protoceratops has more body mass to it, but definitely not far off as far as the size goes. But for another comparison... Here is our Velociraptor Mongoliensis next to our Satakosaurus, also Mongoliensis. And you can see, again, the size of these two are fairly similar. Of course, the Velociraptor is a little more sleek, a little bit slender, and a little bit bulkier here on the Satakosaurus. But you can definitely see, again, that they are roughly around a similar size and definitely look really cool next to each other. It's so cool to have so many of these different species in such a small size like this. But for one more comparison... Here is the original release, the 1 6th scale version of the Satakosaurus next to our beautiful 1 18th scale version. And you can see how similar they look, but yet there's actually a little bit of a difference I'm noticing between these two slightly. A lot of the other figures have been pretty much spot on as far as the coloration goes compared to the original versions. And although this one is extremely, extremely similar, I think the tone of red on the newer one is just a little bit darker than the tone of red on the older one. And outside of that, I think the quills look slightly different as far as the tone of color used on those. 
but I actually do like that. I like that it's a little bit of a difference in this one, and I kind of prefer the colors on the newer one a little bit more so, I think, than the older one. The older one just looks so good. It really, really does, but I don't know what it is exactly about the darker appearance of the newer one, but I really quite like that darkish tone overall on the body, but... Again, as far as Satakasaurus figures go, both of these are so beautiful, it is ridiculous. So either way, no matter which version you go with, you're getting a winner, especially if you go with both versions. So this brand new 118th scale Satakasaurus Mongoliensis from the Beasts of the Mesozoic line is another fantastic release from them, and definitely a gorgeous figure. Again, at a fraction of the size of the previous one, this is definitely an ideal figure for anyone that has an overflowing collection, but really wants to own a Beasts of the Mesozoic figure. You can't go wrong with these very small 118th scale versions, because... They sport some incredible articulation, incredible paintwork, and incredible sculpt for something so small that can pretty much fit into any collection, which is always a big selling point, I think, for these figures. But the Satakasaurus, as far as the sculpt goes, again, looks pretty much just as incredible as the previous version did. Of course, it's much smaller, so it's a little hard to see how nice the detail is on it, but it definitely looks fantastic and has some of the nicest detailing I think you'll see on any of these smaller 118th scale figures. Just an incredibly beautiful sculpt that really nicely replicates the larger version. And the paintwork as well is beautiful. Again, they've done a great job of applying many different tones of color very realistically, applying nice dry brushing and stuff just to always add some depth to the paintwork and just really make sure that the sculpt shines when it comes to the paint as well. And I feel like they do a very good job of that. The articulation on top of everything is also beautiful, really smooth overall, definitely works as perfectly as you would expect, allowing you countless different possibilities as far as posability goes. And then I love the fact that they include the extra legs there so that you can kind of put them on the figure to change the positioning of it, display it again exactly how you would like. Definitely a really cool touch on the part of this, you know, smaller series of beasts of the Mesozoic figures. So if you are interested in this, make sure you get your order in right away because again, like I had stated earlier, I believe these are starting to ship right now. So you don't want to miss out on that, you know, initial shipping spree of these brand new Beasts of the Mesozoic figures. So I will include a link in the description where you can head on over there, place that order right now. Again, David Silva was awesome enough to send this one to me a little bit early to take a look at with you guys. So a huge thank you goes out to him. But like I had stated, they are beginning to ship right now. So either way, they're on their way currently. So if you have it ordered be prepared and if not make sure you get your order in through the link in the description and make sure you like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching